lives we lost today were lives given in the service of liberty, the service of security, and the service of others, in the service of America. 13 U.S. service members and dozens of Afghans killed in suicide attacks outside Kabul's airport. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. Defense officials say U.S. forces in Afghanistan are prepared for more attacks with the evacuation deadline only five days away. The attacks by the two suicide bombers and gunmen took place near the Abbey Gate of Karzai International Airport, also near a hotel. Tonight we have team coverage. Our Richard Allen is at Camp Pendleton with reaction to the deadly attack. News 8 Steve Fiorina talked with several combat veterans today about the tragic situation in Kabul. And our Abby Alford spoke with a local Afghan woman who's relieved to be back in the U.S. tonight. But we begin with Steve Dorsey in Washington. And we do want to warn you, some of the images you're about to see are disturbing. The Pentagon says thousands of evacuees are still being processed at Kabul's International Airport after nearby attacks killed several U.S. service members and many more Afghan civilians. Two suicide bombers assessed to have been ISIS fighters detonated in the vicinity of the Abbey Gate at Hamad Karzai International Airport and in the vicinity of the Barron Hotel, which is immediately adjacent. The attack on the Abbey Gate was followed by a number of ISIS gunmen who opened fire on civilians and military forces. We will hunt you down and make you pay. The president addressed the nation amid heightened criticism over his administration's handling of the situation in Afghanistan. I've instructed the military, whatever they need, if they need additional force, I will grant it. President Biden met with his national security team in the Situation Room in the aftermath of the blast. Several planned White House events, including the president's meeting with the Israeli prime minister, were postponed. But I think our mission remains. We're still committed and to flowing people out up until we terminate operations at some point, you know, towards the end of the month. Lawmakers say U.S. forces should stay until the evacuations are complete. Leave no one behind enemy lines. No one. The State Department had issued a warning overnight for Americans to stay away from the airport based on intelligence reports of a credible threat. Steve Dorsey, CBS News, the White House. We go now live to News 8's Richard Allen, who is outside of Camp Pendleton right now. He's getting a reaction from our military, members of our military, and people in the surrounding community to today's tragedy. Richard. And Carlo and Marcella, a very grim day for all U.S. service members and their family members as they await word on the identities of those service members, the majority of whom are Marines who were killed today in that tragic suicide bombing in Kabul, a tragedy that hits especially close to home with the thousands of Marines we have serving here in Camp Pendleton and also at MCRD San Diego. In fact, there's a growing memorial here for those for those service members. Now, Congressman Daryl Issa, who has spent mo a lot of time in Afghanistan and has been through the Kabul airport, says that the risk to our 5,000 service members still in Afghanistan is going up by the hour, pointing out the need to pull out our people from Kabul by that August 31st deadline. He also points out that the military intelligence community in classified sessions in the weeks leading up to this made it clear that attacks like today's were likely to happen. There was never a question that it wasn't if, but when and how many times. And the same is still true. The threat is continuing to grow. The amount of explosive available to terrorists uh, will continue to grow. And as we begin to get our military out, when we drop those 5,000 and we start taking them out, the threat will continue to grow. And back out here live at Camp Pendleton in Oceanside, you can see behind me there is a growing memorial to those service members who lost their lives. A lot of flowers being dropped off by mostly by family members of service members who are coming by to pay their respects as we await those identities. And while we don't yet know the identities of those service members who lost their lives, Congressman Darrell Issa today pointed out that it is extremely likely that they've had some connection with MCRD San Diego or with Camp Pendleton here throughout their military careers. Carlo and Marcella. Sad day. Thank you, Richard. The retired military community is watching the events closely, with one local Marine general calling for us to strike back. There are also recollections of the Vietnam War and how communications between the war zone and the home front are very different now. News 8's Steve Fiorina has that part of the story. There were intelligence reports about an impending terrorist attack at the Kabul airport. 
it still couldn't be stopped. Retired Brigadier General Mike Neal was a Marine platoon commander early in his career in Vietnam. He is angry. I'm upset like any veteran would be or any American should be. This should never have happened. He says the drawdown in Afghanistan made no sense. If you're going to leave a nation after this many years, you do it from a position of strength, not weakness. The retired general says there should be retaliation. Well, it's about time they learned a lesson that we have our rights to and we just bomb the hell out of them and retribution will be a big deal. A day of aerial bombing, he says, they'll remember forever. We can't expect to be the peacekeepers of the world. Otherwise, these type of things are gonna happen because people will pick on us. They know our weaknesses because we won't kill their women and children and we won't kill people that don't have weapons in their hands. We have these phony rules of war. Let's get over that. We watched it on TV. Retired Rear Admiral John Kerr was a fighter pilot in Vietnam as well as an instructor at Top Gun. Thinking back to his days in combat, he recalls long periods with no contact to family back home. The timeline between getting information back and forth to the family was two weeks sometimes. I was on an aircraft carrier. We didn't have any instant communications, obviously. In today's environment, it's vastly different. You know what's going on almost minute to minute. And I think that in many regards for the families back home is more difficult uh, than it was in my era when families didn't know, but they didn't have to worry about the minute to minute. He thinks that may be more difficult for folks back home now. Both men said the withdrawals brought back memories of Saigon when the Vietnam War ended. Uh, it was a sad day. The evacuation in Kabul is not unlike the evacuation in Saigon in 1975, in that we had lots of supporters that helped the U.S. for 10 years in Vietnam, now 20 years in Kabul, and we have to get them out. Everyone on every military base is on alert, awaiting orders. Steve Fiorina, News 8. Thanks, Steve. And a San Diego Afghan woman is home safe now after escaping the Taliban. Ariane Riofi was in Kabul when she opened a photography school for children. She documented her horrifying escape and shared her story with News 8's Abby Alford. Aria Rayofi flew home from San Diego last weekend. She's too traumatized to appear on camera with us today. But in our conversation, she shared just how terrifying it was to escape Afghanistan and what she's hoping for those still there. Hello. Horrifying memories that San Diegan Aria Rayofi can't get out of her head as she tried to escape the Taliban in Kabul last week. She saw people killed as she ran through gunfire next to terrified children and their families. Aria is now home in San Diego. We had a long conversation about her traumatic escape. I don't know what I got myself into. That was August 15th. She allowed us to share what she documented on Facebook. The Taliban are getting closer and closer and it's chaos. Aria, who opened a children's photography school in Kabul, tried to escape three times but couldn't get to the airport. Look at all these kids, all these families, all these kids. To get to the airport, she had to go on foot through Taliban checkpoints. She ran through desperate crowds where thousands of people were running and screaming, being shot, smoke bombed, or beaten. Please help, I know. She says before running from these gunshots. The Rancho Bernardo native was beaten with a stick. The Taliban broke her driver's arm with the butt of a gun. She was screaming, but knew the Taliban would have no mercy, so she ran. This family is so, so kind and nice. They're like really protecting me, taking me under their wing and helping me. I used to be in the Afghan forces. Aria says on her third try, a U.S. special agent helped her escape. Despite being safe in San Diego, Aria says that she has PTSD. She slept for two days to numb the pain, but cannot get the horrific images out of her head. She has anxiety and continues to have nightmares. She worries about her students who she hears may have no food. She worries about her family and so many other families left behind. Aria says that she is grateful for the support and prayers, but she says action has to be taken. She wants Americans to pressure lawmakers and President Biden to not pull out the U.S. military. Aria says that she continues to work on her documentary about Afghanistan through the lens and appreciates any type of support to share their stories. To learn more, go to CBS8.com. What a story. Thanks, Abby. A volunteer group is helping Afghan refugees who are settling in San Diego County, and you can still give them a hand as well. News 8's Heather Hope will have that part of our story coming up in our second half hour.
other big story tonight, the heat. Yeah. Uh, just oh. bacon out there. A lot of it. We're bacon, not done. bacon. Uh, what? Huh? What did you say? That sounded good. He said bacon, and he meant baking in the sun, but then I heard bacon and got a little hungry. It's almost dinner time. Although that's more breakfast food. Why don't you just go with our weather? I love you, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. We're definitely talking about some heat out there. Temperatures were baking, and we are talking about the hot highs for today. The same for tomorrow. So we had a high of 99 degrees for Ramona today. Also Alpine as well as El Cajon. Triple digit heat in Campo. And for Valley Center, 114 degrees was the high today for Borrego Springs. We're still talking about some hot highs out there, or some hot temperatures out there, as we do have those 90s right now for Ramona, El Cajon. The same for Hamul. 70 have returned closer towards the coast where we had 80s winning out for today and a current temperature of 110 in Borrego Springs. Taking a look at that excessive heat warning, it's still in play for the desert and that's going to go all the way until Sunday night. Daytime highs and upwards of 115 degrees, so very dangerously hot out there. Please make sure you are protecting yourself. Taking a look at your highs for tomorrow, we're still going strong when it comes to those 90s across the inland valleys and still a few more 80s closer towards the coast. 